in terms of character design, anything you guys want to call out that um, you guys are really proud of from the iterations here? Vance, yep, right? Vance. That did these Vance Kovacs. Uh, man, his first drawings were like right in the pocket of what this character was supposed to be. Yeah, he has a great ability to just get like strength and beauty at the same time where, you know, sometimes it's really easy to go one way or the other. Yeah. Um, and I think this character also kind of goes along with our initial idea that the costuming with all our characters felt like they were handmade. They weren't yeah. super ornate. But I think with this character too, we wanted that connection to nature. And I think Vance also really got that really well. Yeah, even his loose sketches, there's, there's so much gesture and life in them. It's, uh... Her characters are infuriating people who live in cold climates. <laughs> she doesn't, like, one, nobody wears enough clothes in the game, apparently, except they're, they're gods, you know, or they're, like, local. She's a witch, right? So she's able to make her feet not feel cold. There is a dude called the Iceman who ascended a mountain in his shorts with no shoes. Right. So it is humanly possible for an average regular human to survive in these kind of conditions. Right. But these are not regular humans. These are mythological figures. So I thought it was cool that her whole thing was, yeah, I don't wear shoes because I have control of the, the, the natural forces around me. I think she was one of the, the more difficult characters to execute just because of you know being a female and with all the background that goes into, a, a, you know, females. In, in this game and also like first when we heard of the witch of the woods i don't know if you remember but we had like actual like witch like old woman yeah yeah uh creating yeah because yeah, right. the revenants were originally called witches Which was, yeah uh and i was definitely like i didn't really want a witch to be a negative thing because it's such a, a heralded sort of like high level position within the mythology is like understanding state their magic is like a big thing like you're really smart she uh know something that very few people know, right? And that even the gods covet something like that. So I think that's cool. Like for me too, it was really important that she was the same height as Kratos, like to be able to look eye to eye with him. I think that's kind of cool. So we're at the Draugrs, we're at the enemies of God of War. Uh, could you chat about how many iterations um, the Draugrs went through? Um, anything you guys want to call out again here? I feel like they went on for years. There was a lot, there was a lot. <laughs> Basically, we're kind of getting the equivalent of what the Skellies were in the old game. We knew this, this character would probably be one of our big, like, multiplicity characters that we see throughout. So exploring what that is. And Corey, again, I think like you were talking about, you didn't want to do the average witch for the previous character. Same thing with this. You kind of push us away from doing, like, the zombie kind of aspect. So the idea with these characters is their spirits are so fierce that they actually, after they die, they go back and find their body and kind of reanimate it and then in doing so since it's kind of like an unnatural rebirth it kind of shatters them so their weapons and their faces and their features are all broken but even going with that i think Corey, you had the thing that they they're not zombies they don't breathe they're not living it's almost the spirit that's kind of driving them yeah yeah eric had a eric williams had that idea of saying like they don't have any breath uh which in the end, as we started looking at it, it meant like we said, we would say they didn't even talk, mm -hmm. like they didn't vocalize at all. But then Niederquell was basically saying that's really hard if we have no sound <laughs> cues whatsoever. And then everybody realized like, yeah, that's that's not a good idea. Uh, so we need that so that we can actually help you understand if they're near you or on the sides or something like that. So, and then uh, uh, also what we do here is obviously since this is going to be a big enemy, we need to look at all the variations. So you can see some sketches here by Stephen Oakley on kind of how we propagate one character into like a, a, a cast. Um, another thing that's great about the studio is we're always really hunting for the, the strong idea. So along with the execution, we always need the strong idea to support it. It's not just if it looks real, if it's successful, it's if the idea works with that. Um, and in doing so, it gets a little rare and rare these days, but we still will do sketching here if it, if it serves getting an idea quickly. So that's one thing in the art book you'll see is the finished 2D paints, the 3D, but also the sketches as well. And that was the first character that, I mean, first enemy that we actually got in the game and working. So he went mm -hmm. through a lot of uh, revisions and a lot yeah. of different, um, and we ended up with some of that at the, the final game, but there was a lot of even the playing with the soul idea of not even have like half of the body and half of it is just as, you know, a soul and how we communicate that idea. So there was a lot of playing with different types of, you know, executions. And then we ended up with a lot of uh, different, different enemies Mm -hmm. for, for the joggers, I think there are like I mean, more than 20 of them oh, easy, or different, yeah. different variations. And how we make that work in the game was really challenging as well.
And a nice thing we also do here is we have a lot of collaboration. So a lot of that, as we figured it out, was taking the feedback, but then working between 2D and 3D and making sure that what we designed actually really did hold up in the, the final game. So it, it's a lot of evaluation, but that collaboration helps. Elves are always a super interesting character, I think. They're, they're more than humans, but they're not as elevated as gods. So they kind of have this really unique middle space, which I think gives us a lot of creative opportunity. Um, this kind of, what you're looking at here kind of shows like the early inception of them. Some pieces that Yefum did where they were going to be more kind of insect uh, kind of inspired. And then kind of more the, the final one we went to where they're more humanoid. Um, these are two characters I think, again, we didn't want like their costume and their design to just be like man-made. So you see a lot of natural elements in them. Um, this is something that'd be great to kind of there's a whole story behind these guys, I feel, too, that uh, we could revisit potentially. I think this is one of the first ones when the collaboration really started to kick up a lot with the, the combat guys and what they wanted to test mm -hmm. with these guys. And so we had a lot of early revisions when we got together and uh, some different uh, different designers were choosing the ones that they kind of felt like um, it would work for what they, they had in mind. That's why we had a lot of early, early re revisions, or even the more insect type of character. But then it kind of evolved, even on the uh, environment side, of, you know, where they live and a lot of the more insect uh, vibe early on. But then it kind of evolved into something a little more. Um, elf I liked, elf like trying to flip the script on the idea that elves are Orlando Bloom, right? And it's like to be able to look at it and say like, oh, there's there's inspirations from the sort of traditional understanding of fairies a little bit, mm -hmm. as well as then our kind of own take on this idea of both the light elves and the dark elves. Um, so that we could sort of make our own version of it, right? Yeah. Instead of feeling like what we're doing is just sort of making pointy-eared guys who, you know, are hunky like Orlando Bloom. Um, and I think we can just, I know, with everything that we've done throughout this entire process, it felt like we were always able to kind of approach each one and say, how would we do it, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what the sort of popular culture understanding of it is, how would we approach each of these in order to make something unique so that when people look at this world, they say, oh, that's, that is Santa Monica's Norse, right? That mm -hmm. The same way that people look at the Norse world. Some even say, like, this is the way Norse mythology was because it's Thor's universe, right? So they all think Chris Hemsworth is Thor, right? Even though he's red-haired in the actual myth. Yeah. Uh, they all think of him as the blonde, hunky guy with the, the helmet. Uh, so I think it's interesting. It's, hopefully it will be effective and resonate with people. Yeah, I think the historical reference as well helped a lot on this one. When we start adding a lot of that stuff, like this has a lot of the tribal influence mm -hmm. that we um, selected early on. That's when I think it kind of starts to re resonate with, with people and uh, make it work. And same thing for the light ones that uh, it's not in here, but there's a lot of that contrast when they have a lot more ornate designs and the, the feeling of uh, more. And everyone's calling them the dark ones and the light ones. And this was very intentional because early on in the project, when talking about things like elves or fairies or dwarves, everybody had a very knee-jerk D&D reaction. So I, I, I made a concerted effort to rename things so that people would get more comfortable with the idea instead of every time I'd say, like, we're going to talk about elves, they'd be like, oh, okay, this God of War, why are we talking about elves, right? Uh, so I think it was wasn't until like what two or three years in where it was like okay we're gonna change the elf uh, or the light one named now back to light elves because it seems like everyone's comfortable and we don't have to have the D D discussion yeah, right like over and over again bit. uh that's quite funny that we have to almost fool ourselves so that we're comfortable with working in the space instead of constantly going back to the well of ah lord of the rings had elves and this is what they look like no but i actually think that really helps because it kind of breaks us out of a character type that has so much history associated yeah. with Makes yeah. you look at it as a unique thing as opposed to like the history and the weight that it carries, right? That everybody's like, oh, it's elves and fairies. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, and one thing we did too with this character and the, the the light one is kind of the counter to the dark ones, even though they're they're opposing. On first look, we wanted them to feel very drastically, but on second look, you might realize that there's actually some similarities between them, just kind of that they're from the same realm and they do share some kind of history. They are two sides of the same coin. You know, like they are intrinsically tied together uh, and just like different human beings wanting to fight each other, they are the same and yet they have conflict. Mm -hmm.
Uh, so looking at the Revenant, um, just curious about the story behind the design with the lantern, the hay, all the elements that go into it. I think this one was really like make something different and unique that feels like it's not uh, the wish that you've seen before in in, in uh, different games. So it was a lot of a lot of sketching by Yefem again, yeah. of just trying to come up with something that feels unique. I feel a lot of, like Bloodborne also came out like right at the time when we started designing. Yeah, this. that was frustrating as hell. <laughs> Because honestly, yeah, this came, three, yeah. the initial yeah. thing with the rake came from a, an etching that I saw about, uh, you know, sort of medieval Europe when they talked about the plague. They called it pestilence or pesta, yeah. right? And they had the, it was, it was personified as this like scary old woman with a rake that would come into your village and essentially kill everybody with her breath, right? And it was the way that they sort of made the Black Plague kind of physical. Right. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. This concept of pestilence, this, this old woman with a rake uh, and the rake. I just kept kind of going back to and feeling like that's so interesting because it's just it's so innocuous. It's like a piece of like yard equipment. Right. But it has a kind of sinister vein to it. So she took forever to get right. You know, like this was something we went back and forth on for quite a long time. Even the upper right hand corner is that. The More drummer, the drummer yeah, yeah. The cut character of the the, the drummer. <laughs> well, the witch or the the revenants at the beginning had more uh, variations within them. Oh, so they were having like potentially like that drum vibe. Yeah. And I, th I think that was even coming kind of like from combat of almost like you couldn't see her. You almost had to follow the sound of the drum. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a real cool idea, but uh, you know sometimes things don't work ultimately for what we need. But what I, was I, the lantern? Did we put the lantern on because we wanted her to be seen easier from a distance? Or was that just like a random sort of art choice that it was like, we just put a lantern on there? I think it came from the design or one of the first sketches when it just feels the silhouette reads much better with the yeah. lantern. And when we started playing with the variations, that was something that we kept uh, through all, all of them. Yeah, and that's, and I, I think another thing we, we kind of try and do too is we want to make these characters frightening, but avoid going into like the horror side of it. It's kind of mm. like a fine line, but it's, it's very easy to go on that. And I, I think, you know, what Yefum did with this is is really kind of hit what we were looking for. Or it's a scary, scary character without being kind of the kind of cliche horror, which. Yes, cliche horror, bad. Uh, for these Valkyrie um, artwork, I'm just really curious about the inspiration.